Hello geez, Hong Nguyen here, back with another video. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about the importance of going about it correctly when you're injured. So, yeah, how to deal with injury, essentially. So I'm making this video uh, because recently I went to um, do an ultrasound uh, for my shoulder, my, my right shoulder, and the results came back, went to see the doctor, and I have a tendonitis, calcification, and a, um, a, what you, a tear in, the, uh, in one of the uh, rotator cuff muscles, uh, the supra, um, su uh, su uh, because I know it in French, right? Here in Quebec, where they speak French, uh, supra épineux, so supra uh, spin, spin nut, uh, whatever, you know, one of the three muscles. And I should know uh, the word for this, so I apologize because I'm actually a personal trainer, but I forgot the damn word. It's supra spinatus, something like that. It's one of the muscles, right, of the rotator cuff. So I have a tear there. It's cal and I have calcification in the shoulder joint and I have tendonitis. So anyways, uh, this is due to judo because a lot of times I stand in this position, like when I'm grabbing, you know, the kumikata. So I'm holding here on the lapel and on the sleeve right here. And then the person in front of me is doing that too. Uh, most guys are right-handed, so they'll attack the right hand, right? And that causes a lot of pulling, you know, and that's how this is like a chronic injury. It's been like a couple of months now, you know? probably six months or some shit like that. So anyways, I finally, uh, you know, it was finally getting annoying. So I, I decided, fuck it, you know, actually it was getting annoying. And then I, I used some mobility work and it felt better, but then it kept on coming back, it kept on going, coming back. And I, at one point I talked to it, I, I went to see my uh, family doctor and she said, okay, let's do an ultrasound because you can do a ultrasound for uh, your shoulder. Um, so we did it, results came back, so that's what I have. Now, what I'm gonna do now is that I'm gonna go see, she wrote me a note, a doctor's note, so I could go see my doctors at um, um, the McGill Sports uh, Clinic. So these guys are sports uh, doctors here, are uh, sports uh, doctors, sports medicine doctors, so they specialize in this. They're gonna take a look at it, and most likely I might get a cortisol shot to help with the, um, uh, what do you call it, the inflammation, right? And then from there, I'll probably have to do some physio. But now I got to talk to them because uh, judo season isn't over yet. And also, um, right now, I'm practicing. I'm going through uh, studying all the techniques for my brown belt and my black belt at the same time. Because once, I, once you get your brown belt in judo, after that, for you to get your black belt, it's no longer your club that gives it to you. It's, uh, it's an exam you have to pass at the federation. So for you to pass that exam... Uh, at the federation, well, you have to pra you have you have the, the the theoretical exam, right, where you're demonstrating techniques and katas, and then you got to go accumulate 120 points in competition. So for every competition you participate in, it's 10 points, right? If you just register and then you show up there, and then you get like 10 points for every epon that you score. Epon is like kind of like a KO in judo. So, anyways. That's, uh, that's not an easy task to do, especially in my position where right now, like I'm, I'm 39, I started judo like about three years ago. So I've been able to, to kick ass with people at, who had the same um, progression rate, who started at the same time as me, right? But now that I'm, that I'm about to get my brown belt and then I'm going, now when I fight, I gotta fight with like brown and black belts. The problem is the, the, the 20 year old like brown and black belts, they've been doing it since they're 10. They've had, you know, or, or earlier. So they've had their black belts for a long while now. So they have a lot more experience. And then if I go up, and of course, you know, they're younger. So technically they're supposed to be more endurant, more, you know, uh, you know, not necessarily stronger because I'm, I'm pretty strong um, for my age, right? Because I've been, you know, developing my strength for a long time, but maybe they're more conditioned. Anyways, whatever. But they have more experience. And now, even if I fight with the older guys, it's like a lot of these older guys who are like 35 and up who still do judo and who are like brown belt or black belt, 
they've been coaches for a very, very, very long time. So they have a lot of experience. So anyways, in either case, I'm kind of like, um, I'm kind of disadvantaged in terms of experience. Anyways, it's not an easy task to get that 110, uh, to get those 120 points. That's what I'm saying in my situation where I'm now. It's not an equal playing field for me. Doesn't mean I'm not gonna do it. But now all that to say that when I go see these doctors, if they tell me I gotta do physio, well, I gotta see, okay, well, if I gotta do physio, like, do I stay away from, from judo? Usually when you do physio, you can't be, you know, fucking with that same muscle that's injured. But I'm gonna go see them. I'll go see them this week and I'll see what they say. And then from there, I'll decide, I'll talk to my coaches. I say, listen, this is the injury. This is how much time it's gonna take, an estimate time, you know, uh, two, three months, whatever, for the shoulder. How do we structure this so that, you know, uh, I get ready. Maybe I'll stop my season right now. There's actually, I think, uh, maybe two or three more competitions, you know, two, no, two more, I think two or three more. So maybe I'll just stop my season now rehab the shoulder and then after that you know continue working on my technique and stuff for that it's something i got to look into so sorry sorry i got a little bit off track there but what i mean essentially is that when you have an injury no matter how small it is you have to have it checked out by your doctor i know in the states you guys if you guys don't have insurance it's very complicated right but you have to Eventually, if you want to keep practicing martial arts and, and, and do like uh, these crazy things that we, we tend to enjoy doing, right? Because it's so fun, then you have to get to a point where you're able to, to have um, insurance, healthcare, so that you can take care of your health if you want to keep practicing like this, right? Like if you still want to uh, compete and fight and stuff like that. So when you have an injury, okay, me at this point, I don't wait. Okay, for the shoulder, I might have lagged on that, but I had my knee to take care of. And so I took care of the knee. Now I have the shoulder that I'm gonna take care of. And I also have uh, some mobility I wanna get back in my right, uh, in my left, um, uh, left elbow and my right ankle, which uh, has mobility issues also. So one thing at a time. Uh, so the shoulder's the first thing. If you feel something like, you know, a lot of times we think, ah, it's, it'll get better on its own. But like, if the injury doesn't get better, in like a week or two, go see the doctor. And remember, like one thing that I, I used to forget to do, but now I, I, I do it. When you get injured somewhere, okay, when you know the date that you injured it, write it down, okay? Write that down, have yourself a little notebook for the injuries, right? And write that down, the day that you got, that it happened. And from there, give it a week or two, see how it feels. Now, if it doesn't fucking heal in a week, like go see a doctor, man. And then from there, you, you know, like you, you go about the process of, uh, you know, your doctor getting an appointment with the doctor, seeing the doctor, getting the right um, x-rays or MRIs. And then from there, you know, having another, your doctor again, or a sports medicine doctor, uh, have maybe your family doctor refer you to a sports medicine doctor, right? So then you could, they could take a look at that because sports medicine doctors, they understand that you want to get back to where you were. Uh, before you got injured in your sports, right? They're more specialized. So then you get to those guys and either you'll have surgery, you'll need surgery or you'll need physio. Most likely if, you know, a lot of times it's physio, uh, but if you need to have surgery, then, you know, maybe get a second opinion. If you can get it, you know, heal it without surgery, whatever, if you guys are really uh, against surgery, right? But I think that's the, the right way to go about it not to ignore it because a lot of times what we do is we just kind of like ah whatever you know it's gonna get better it's not the first time it's not true man like I, as as i age I, as i got older now I, i'm realizing that it doesn't work that way like things don't get better on its own you have to take care of it right so don't don't just put that to the wayside or tell yourself ah, i'll tough it out it'll get better it's not gonna get better you gotta you, like it will, but if it's, if it's nothing, then yes, it'll get better, right? If it's just like, ah, your muscle's being sore, it'll get better, of course. But if it's like, if you have doubts that it's injured, you're injured, it might heal all crooked, or you might just keep injuring it again, or whatever. So you gotta uh, take the time to really have it checked out 
And you see, I didn't know that, but look at, look at this. This shoulder here, I thought it was just like, ah, it's just pulling on, you know, it's, it's being pulled on all the time, you know, so that's what it is. But tendonitis, calcification, and uh, tear in the supraspinatus. Spinatus, there you go. Supraspinatus, uh, you know, one of the muscles in the, uh, in the rotator cuff. It's fucked up, man. So anyways, all that to say that if I knew that back then, maybe I could have just taken time back then, two, three months. And you see, even I, I preach all of this, but I still kind of screwed up here. But I probably screwed up much. I would have screwed up much worse if I didn't already have like a general um, uh, line of thinking, uh, you know, a, a protocol, so to speak, in my mind on how to deal with injuries. But since I've been through so much, then, you know, I just want to share that with you guys. So I hope that makes sense, guys. Um, Leave a comment down below. What kind of injuries have you guys dealt with? And what was, give me an example of a time that you dealt with it like intelligently and accordingly and timely. And other times where you just let shit ride out thinking that it was going to be good. And then you ended up like having to uh, suffer with the injury and having a more longer and pain in the ass type of road to recovery. So... That's it for this one, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Like, comment, subscribe, and of course, share my videos if, um, uh, if you can, right? Sharing is caring, helps the channel grow, and once we grow this channel, we can do all kinds of, uh, I don't know what we could do. I guess we could just have more people sharing ideas and getting smarter, better, and you know, stronger, faster, fitter, and, and all these great ideas for, for martial arts and fitness. So that's it. Thank you very much. See you. Peace.